I'm John Skinner, and this supports my book, Fishing the Bucktail. I'm going to do something a little bit different here and uh, take this trip and break it into two videos. And uh, it'll be pretty long. This is about 13 minutes on this first part, and then a, a long 35 minute part, and uh, not too much editing. And I think the less editing, the more realistic everything is. Okay, so there's a focus on this with, with finding fish. This is early in the season, and uh, I don't know where the fluke are. I'm, I have no idea. Uh, my daughter and I have just gone out, and um, the, the best I could do is I found some birds, and by that I mean uh, arctic terns, and uh, they're hitting the water, and I think you'll be able to see them in some parts of the video. Um, and uh, they indicate bait, so I pulled up on those, and uh, you can see what's happening here. We're, we're being inundated by sea robins, and anybody who uh, fluke or flounder fishes these waters is completely familiar with these sea robins. Um, but, you know, this is where the bait is, and this is where we're starting. And uh, you see Katie's hooked up again, and uh, another sea robin. So, let's see what we're going to do here. Yep, it's the best year for sea robins. So that's enough of that. That's uh, about four sea robins there in just a couple of minutes. So uh, what I've done is I've made a move. So and and the move doesn't look like much probably from the the shoreline. Um, I was in about you know, twelve or thirteen feet of water, which I knew in this area is kind of a high spot. So what I did was I just ran north. So moving off the beach and I moved slowly and I was looking for a drop and I did find it. It went down to 17 feet so you know, I just set up there. I mean the bait was there too. It's a little bit deeper and uh, Katie gets a 17 inch or 17 and a half inch right away. The limit's 18. Um, the way things have been so far at this point of the season, you see what I'm doing there? I hit the, the GPS and took a mark just because of that one fish. That's how bad it is. Um, it's just giving me a reference point uh, so I can get back on this spot. So let's see what happens. And again, the size isn't terrible. I mean, it gives hope. You know, they're not tiny. So depending on how high your volume is, you might hear some of the conversation on the boat. And right there, I'm saying. Well, it's it's not a tiny fish. It gives us some hope. It's kind of close, and you know that, that's something that's important. You know, sometimes if I'm in an area and I'm just getting, you know, tiny 13, 14 inch fish, um, that doesn't interest me. But you know, these here, well, they're this one's worth measuring. Yeah, throw it at your daughter. That that works real well. Uh, she likes that. Um, so this one's close to 18. It's not going to make it, uh, but. You know, we're in the ballpark there, so that gives me some encouragement about this particular spot. And, uh, all right, I need to be kind here and give my daughter a clean place to sit now. There you go. So I mentioned that I, I did find birds and there's some bait around. Uh, there has not been bait at this part of the season so far and uh, one of the things that I noticed that uh, when the sand eels, the predominant bait that uh, we usually find the, the fluke feeding on, when the sand eels aren't around, um, those fluke are feeding on crabs and shrimp and other stuff and uh, in response to that I use the gulp three inch new penny color shrimp on the high hook and uh, boy, this has just been very, very successful for me. In fact, I'm thinking maybe I should just use these all the time, even when there's sand eels around. Um, these work particularly well in um, bay areas like Long Island, South Shore Bays, uh, in the muddy areas where these fish often feed on crabs and shrimp. Um, the gulp shrimp works great, and I think if, if you were to watch both parts of this video all the way through, um, it will be pretty impressive. I think you, you might consider buying a tub of this stuff because it just works so well. We're using six foot rods with uh, small bait casting reels. 
15 pound test uh, spider wire stealth braid for the main line. At the terminal end, there's a liter of 20 pound test fluorocarbon. At the end of that liter is a surgeon's loop where a bucktail is attached, and that bucktail is tipped with a 4 inch Berkeley Gulp Alive swimming mullet. One foot above that is about a 4 inch dropper loop with a plain Gamagatsu 3 0 bait saber hook, and that's where we're attaching the gulp shrimp. So this is a, a gorgeous Sunday morning uh, and you, you don't see any boats around and if you watch my videos quite often you won't see me fishing near anyone and uh, I, I don't go looking for the boats when I head out to fish. I go to areas where I think there's going to be fish. I try to find my own fish. Um, I'd much rather be in an area that I'm just working it over myself or with one other boat than uh, to be in a place that's getting raked over by a lot of lines and actually if I went about mm, about a mile away from where I am now there's there's an area where there's a cluster of boats but um, I'm staying clear of them and it's just something that usually works out well for me So it wasn't that long since we caught a fluke, but you might have heard me say, um, "Oh, geez, you know, I, I could see the rig when I when I set the hook because it's that shallow." And you know, we just caught a sea robin. What did we catch when we were in shallow water before we caught sea robins? So I put right back down again because she dropped a fluke. But um, already I'm thinking I want to end this drift and, and head back up, and uh, I'm not going to give this too much longer. And a lot of this comes down to when you're fishing. To try to uh, refine your drift and um, yeah there's a lot to that so she's got a small fish there I'm not too interested in that I'm not sure what I've got yet or maybe I just missed one um, but anyway we got a sea robin we got a small we're in shallow water um, it doesn't matter that just a couple minutes ago we caught a couple of halfway decent fluke I'm gonna end this drift and go back up and this time uh, because we hooked up fairly early on this drift, um, I'm going to run up a little bit further and than where we started and try to see where these fish start. So I guess you'll get some clue here as to how far I'm running. Um, uh, so I'm doing. I'm not going too fast here. It looks like I'm going fast, but. You know, I, I try not to make really long drifts. I try to um, really optimize the drifts, keep them short, and, and stay on the fish. So you see me cutting the wheel uh, into the direction of the drift there. It's not going to help much here because there's no breeze. But when there is a breeze and you do that, that usually will help keep the boat drifting back uh, perpendicular to the current. And um, it just keeps the lines straightened out and everything. Um, but like I said, with no wind here, it's not going to help too much. So the size limit, as I mentioned, is 18 inches. The bag limit is five per person. So with the two of us, um, our limit would be 10 fish. And uh, 
we're still looking for a first keeper here and if we get two then we know we've got enough for fish tacos and it's kind of hard to believe at this point um, the way the trip is going with these smalls but uh, if you do watch the second part uh, we're gonna get that limit and actually we're gonna get that limit and have lost a couple by swinging them over the side so uh, this, this action is gonna get much better I'll tell you what, if this is a fluke, this is going to be a, this has got a lot of potential here. This is going to be interesting. I'm in a little trouble with the drag though, which is not good. So I don't want to take a stupid shot with the net and try to get it from behind. That's just not going to work. And the problem is Katie's got a fish on too, and uh, so she's not available to net. But it works out. Well, it's a little bit over six pounds, so it's not a monster, but it's a monster for this trip. Um, so I hope you watch the second part of this, and uh, there'll be a lot of good action in there, and you'll get to see a lot of the details that go into uh, putting together a nice trip.